In a previous video, we saw that the maximum height of capillary rise increases with decreasing pore size. In this video, we analyze the rate of rise in terms of sorptivity, a property of both the porous solid and the liquid. We also show how this sorptivity is measured. Consider a model porous material with parallel vertical cylindrical pores whose base is in contact with water. If there are n such pores per unit area of the base, and the radius of each pore is rp, the porosity of the body is phi equals n times pi times rp to the power 2. If a wetting liquid is sucked into the pores, we have an upward flow and we'll note h as the height reached at any time t. The volumetric flow rate q through one such cylinder is described by the Poiseuille equation. q is minus pi rp to the power 4 over 8 eta times delta p over h, where delta p is the pressure difference between the bottom and the top of the liquid and would later simply be taken as the capillary pressure. For now, we note that the flux J, or the flow per unit area, is obtained from the product between the number of pores N per unit area and the flow rate Q in an individual pore, where Q can be substituted by using the Poiseuille equation. Furthermore, using the expression for the porosity, phi, we find that j is minus phi rp squared over 8 eta times delta p over h. Apart from this, the flow rate q in a single pore is related to the rate of rise dh over dt. So the total flux into the porous body becomes j equals n pi rp to the power 2 dh over dt. As before, this is better written by introducing the porosity so that j equals phi dh over dt. Previously, we had obtained another expression for j, giving it as a function of delta p. If we now combine both equations and rearrange them, we find that the rate of rise dh over dt is inversely proportional to h, so that the rate decreases as the water rises higher. To find h as a function of time, we move it on the same side of the equation as dh to get h dh as a function of dt. This is then integrated on one side between 0 and h and on the other side between 0 and t. In doing so, we consider a lab scale sample with small pores so that gravity may be neglected, implying that delta p is constant. This leads to a relation between h squared and t that we rearrange to get an expression for h, showing that it is proportional to the square root of time. We write this by introducing sorptivity, sh, for the proportionality constant between h and square root of time, where h is equal to sh times square root of time. And sh is the square root of minus rp squared over 4 eta delta p. This proportionality is very important. As shown in this plot, it implies that while h increases over time, there is a curvature to that increase, indicating that the rate of rise slows down as the height increases. When the same data are plotted versus the square root of time, we get a straight line of which the slope is the sorptivity. We can now replace the capillary pressure, delta p, in the expression for sorptivity by using Laplace's equation, delta p equals minus 2 gamma lv over rp times cosine of theta. This gives an expression for the sorptivity in terms of the porous solid, Rp, the liquid, the viscosity and the contact angle, as well as the interaction between the solid and the liquid, 
through their contact angle, theta. The derivative of the liquid height versus time gives its rate of vertical rise. This rate varies with the inverse of the square root of time. It therefore decreases over time, and this is because the pore length, causing viscous resistance to fluid flow, increases. Experimentally, it is easier to measure the mass of the liquid than its height. Both are related since the mass change is the product of the liquid density, the base area of the sample in contact with the liquid, the sample porosity, and the liquid height, h. Substituting our previous equation for h, we find that the mass change per unit area of the sample is rho phi sh square root of time, which is best written as a product between a mass-based sorptivity, sm, and the square root of time. Where sm equals rho phi sh. So, the expression for the liquid height, or ingressed mass, as well as the rate of rise, or the rate of ingressed mass, have very similar expressions, but involve similar, though not equivalent, definitions of sorptivity, once by height and once by mass. The sorptivity is most simply measured by putting a sample in contact with water and weighing it periodically. Each measurement, the sample is placed back in contact with water to allow capillary rise to continue. By doing this several times, a sorptivity plot can be built. Alternatively, the sample is suspended from a scale and its weight is continuously measured over time. Plotting the change in weight versus the square root of time gives a straight line whose slope is the sorptivity SM. A plateau appears when the water reaches the top of the sample. Similar results are obtained if the height is measured with the slope being then sh. At this point, it is important to distinguish the effects of pore size both on the maximum height of capillary rise and on its rate. We have seen that the sorptivity is proportional to the square root of the pore size. So, the rate of rise dh over dt is higher for coarse materials than for fine ones. On the other hand, the maximum height of capillary rise is inversely proportional to the pore size. So, for coarse materials, the maximum height of rise is lower than for fine materials. This means that water rises faster in coarse materials, but cannot go as high. In conclusion, the amount of absorbed water increases with the square root of time, so the rate of rise decreases as the water advances. Moreover, the rate of liquid penetration into a porous material increases with pore size, while the maximum height of capillary rise increases as the pore size decreases. These general conclusions hold for more complex pore structures and are not limited to the simple parallel cylindrical pores used to derive our equations. Also, as our equations justifiably neglect gravity in the analysis of lab-scale samples with small pores, the rates obtained hold regardless of the direction of ingress. It should however be noted that our analysis does not include possible effects of evaporation that will be dealt with in another video.